Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Um, welcome to Heal Lane uh, this morning. For those who are here, for those who are joining online later, um, you're very welcome. We're very grateful for David Warden to um, be coming to preach to us later. He will be speaking um, from John 20 um, on Thomas. Um, so shall we just pray now? Lord Jesus, thank you for bringing us together this morning. Please help still our restless hearts and focus on you. Please help us to worship you, to learn from your word, and to apply it to our lives. Amen. So we're going to um, open by singing Oceans. upon the waters the great unknown where feet may fare and there I find you in the mystery in oceans deep my faith will stand and I will call upon your name and keep my eyes above the waves when oceans rise my soul will rest in your embrace I am yours and you are mine your grace abounds in deepest waters Sovereign hand will be my guide. Where feet may fail and fear surrounds me, you've never failed and you won't start now. And I will call upon your name and keep my eyes above the way. When oceans rise, my soul will rest in your embrace. I am yours, and you are mine. And you are Your name and keep my eyes. 
rise, my soul will rest in your embrace. I am yours, and you are mine. So, um, just I'm going to say something just for the children and everybody. Um, but I was just thinking, um, it was talking to a, a, an old friend at the start of this thought process, but you're at, you're at school or somewhere with a group of friends and somebody says, have you seen, there's a new painting mural been painted on the back wall of this building on the other side of the school thing. It's amazing. It wasn't there yesterday, it's there today. Maybe it's a Banksy, I don't know. But whatever, it's, 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 it's on the back wall. Um, what, so what's your reaction? Like, what do you need to believe or to do that? Are you one of the people who's going to um, say, oh yes, that sounds, that sounds great. Are you not going to believe it unless you see a group of people come over? Any other thoughts I was thinking? Are you going to dash round the corner? I thought the uh, adaptation would be actually, are you going to see whether somebody's taken a photo of it and look at a photo of it? Um, so it's just a thinking about what do we need to see as evidence to believe? Oh, is one, one witness, one, one of your friends, do you trust what, the account of one of your friends or do you trust if there's a group of people come and tell you? What got me thinking about this was a um, friend of mine who i would known for 25 years. Um, I shared a flat with him for about six months at one point. He's another doctor. And he's heard a lot about the Christian faith. Um, he, will be honest, he doesn't believe. Um, and I had a conversation with him about 18 months ago. And he'd been for work purposes, to, to Israel. Um, and he'd, had, he'd been in, um, he'd flown into Tel Aviv, and then he'd um, gone to Jerusalem. He had a meeting with university people in Jerusalem. And he had an afternoon off during the time he'd got between meetings, and he walked through, um, walk, had an afternoon off walking through Jerusalem. And he said something really interesting to me. He said he walked through all the places where the old temple was and that. And what he realised, and he'd never really thought, he'd always thought of everything he'd heard about the Christian faith as a series of stories, a bit like we'd read a novel or something. What he said, he actually walking through that these places and the events in the Bible were bound in historical reality. These places are real. These events happened. What he realised after that was actually it wasn't a... Th he had to make a decision about whether this... about the reality from what's written in the Bible because actually this isn't a fictional thing. This is actually a historical account. And it just led me to think and actually it led him to question a lot about what he thought about Christianity and about faith because actually rather than just thinking about it all a nice tale from the past, this was actually a historical series of events that actually happened, and there's quite good evidence that they happened, and actually what was his response to it? Just a thought. Uh, um, we're going to sing again, and the children are going to leave at the end of um, this song, <coughs> And Can It Be? For me who caused his pain For me who him 
Emptied himself of all but love And bled for Adam's helpless race Tis mercy, oh, immense and free For, oh my God, it found out me Tis mercy, oh, immense and free For, oh my God, it found Diffused a quick name ray. I woke the dungeon flame with light. My chains fell off, my heart was free. I rose went forth and followed thee. My chains fell Condemnation now I dread Jesus and all in him is mine Alive in him I live Now, just before Andy's going to come and give us our first Bible reading, but just some notices. Um, some of you may know that um, there was a ladies' bluebell walk yesterday, which was postponed because um, Louise, unfortunately, was not very well. She's moved that till um, next Saturday afternoon. Um, so walking from 3.30, and if you want to come to the tea afterwards but not to the bluebell walk that's at five um their contact details are in the church directory um could she uh, could if you are planning on going could you either email or leave a message on their answer phone to say that you're going just so she knows how many to cater for thank you very much um people should have received a notice sheet either by email or in hard copy if that's how you do it i don't think i've not been given anything else on this no, fine. Andy. Uh, the first reading is taken from Acts. It's chapter 1, verses 1 to 11. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for my gift which the Father has promised, that you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered round him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, 
and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus, who had been taken from you into heaven, will come back in the same way that you have seen him go into heaven. Amen. So we're going to sing again now um, our next song, and then I'll come and then we'll move to a time of prayer. We're now going to move to a time of prayer. Um, just a couple of requests were put out on the prayer chain this week. Um, I understand from David and Sylvia that um, Sue Reed, um, who was very unwell, um, has um, regained consciousness in intensive care. So we give thanks to that and um, just continue to pray for her and her family. Um, also, I um, understand Arthur is in hospital, so pray for him and his family. Um, I'll open in prayer. There'll then be a quiet time to either pray in our hearts or um, out loud. Do feel free to share things that are on your heart. And then um, I'll close with the Lord's Prayer. Lord, we can come to church sometimes feeling overburdened and weary please help us to lay our burdens on you and come to you in openness to share our praise our thanksgiving for all that you do in our lives all that you give us we think for those monetary gifts that are given in our collection We think of those in the collection, for those given by direct debit and standing order, for those who give their time, their efforts, their energies to this church and to the wider work of the Christian community in Devon. We just give you thanks for this. We pray that we would come to you as we recognise where we fall short where we don't do as we should do, where we don't say what we should do, where we re remain silent when we should speak up, when we 
say things when we should keep our mouths shut. When our hearts are turned and hardened to you. We pray that we would admit our wrongs, resolve to change our behaviours, and to try and act in line with your will. And as the burdens that are placed on our hearts on day to day, that we pray that we would be bringing these daily to prayer, in prayer to you. Amen. Pray for the upcoming Children's Holiday Club. Uh, we already have 50 plus children booked in, which is great. Some of whom don't go to church at all. We just thank you, Lord, that they have seen that we want to come and pray. They will have a good time. But so most importantly, they will learn more about you and want to know even more about you afterwards. We thank you for the news and help us, Lord, as a lot of work goes into it. We thank you for them for giving their time. We just pray that everything will go well on the next few days. Let's pray for fine weather as well, Lord, because it will be so much easier then. But just thank you, Lord, that we're, we've got the means, the facilities, and the ability and the willingness of people to run this, run this three day event, Lord. And we just pray that your hand will be on it. We pray for those in our congregation who aren't really sure about you yet. <clears throat> they be young, middle, old, in, or whatever age. We just pray that you would reveal yourself to them. And they would really know your presence and know that you are real and you exist. And that you can be there to help them along their life's travels, Lord. We just pray for those people that you would really come alongside them. And you reveal yourself to them. Amen. pray for those members of our congregation who are less well and for their families and their family members who are less well, whether this be in physical health, mental struggles, spiritual torment. We pray particularly for the family of, um, for, for Sue Reed and her family. We give you thanks that she's a little bit better, but pray that we know that this is still very serious and we pray for them all at this time that they would seek your will give wisdom to the doctors and those looking after her we pray for Saint, for, for Arthur and um, we just pray for him and his family as he's unwell at the moment and please help us to remember those known to us throughout the week in our prayers when we know that they they have needs for their health or other needs. Just help prompt us to pray for people in, in our congregation, in our families and those known to us. Amen. And so we now just close with the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I'm going to read the second reading, which comes from John, the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 24 to 31. Now Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. 
But he said to them, Unless I see the, see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe it. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, see my hands, reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus did many other miraculous signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Amen. So we're going to sing again um, 559. this morning just pray that um he would open our words our hearts uh, your word to us and that our hearts would be receptive to what you wish us to say this morning amen amen well it's lovely to be with you this morning i think it was a, a, a while ago i was here last and uh, um it's good to see a lot of familiar faces as well so it's really nice to uh, join you this morning on this lovely sunday morning as well isn't it uh, glorious the weather that we've been having recently anyway i want to uh, bring a word from uh, john chapter 20 and verse 25 and so the other disciples told him we have seen the lord thomas said to them Unless I see the scars of the nails in his hands and put my finger on those scars and my hand in his side, I will not believe. Well, the story of Thomas has been repeated, hasn't it, over and over again. Um, 
And the phrase doubting Thomas has been used on millions of occasions. Thomas just couldn't believe it. Jesus alive? Arisen from the dead? The very thought was preposterous. No, he wasn't going to have his hopes raised. He feared getting hurt again. Jesus, he thought, was the Lord, the Messiah, but with the crucifixion, his hopes had been dashed and crushed. He had reached a low point uh, that his faith had been damaged to such a degree that unbelief and doubt filled his heart. It didn't matter what other people said. He couldn't accept a living, risen Jesus without seeing the scars himself. Concrete evidence was going to be essential before he could be moved. Thomas knew that Jesus had been crucified, but alive again? Wow, that was something else. You know, it's a temptation to limit the Lord and the Holy Spirit, to confine the power to prevent things from going too far. Wouldn't it have been tragic for Thomas spending a life in despair if Jesus had not made that special point of going to him and saying, put your finger here, look at my hands, then stretch out your hand and put it in my side. Stop doubting and believe. Imagine it, going around mourning the loss of a close friend and all the time that friend is alive. Fortunately for Thomas, he did know Jesus. Unlike the uh, time of Thomas, we don't have the physical Jesus to go and see. Last Thursday, we celebrated Jesus' ascension into heaven, and today is Ascension Sunday. So can we still take our doubts, our fears to Jesus, even if he has ascended into heaven? The question is, do you know him? It's very easy to know about Jesus by reading the Bible, going to church, listening to others talk about him. But that isn't what I mean. Do you know Jesus? Do you know the heart of Jesus? Do you know of his love and grace for you? Do you realize that he wants to use you for his glory. Thomas cried out, having seen the risen Lord, my Lord and my God. Then the fears, the doubts, the unbelief disappeared, and Jesus was able to work in power in Thomas's life. No longer was Thomas missing out. No longer was he in bondage to fear and misgivings. No longer was he held back. He'd been set free. What about us this morning? Are we in bondage to unbelief, doubts, or fears? You know, the opposite of fear is faith. I want to tell you a, an amazing story now. Um, if I get a bit emotional, it's because it's so amazing. In 1970, an American named Thomas Law was leading a team of young people um, called Living Sound in ministry in South Africa. The team was singing one night, and uh, while he was on the they were on the platform, Terry was in the prayer room on his knees. And he had a Bible on the floor in, in front of him, and he was preparing to come out and preach. As he knelt there, the Lord Jesus came into the room and spoke to him. He said, I am going to send you behind the Iron Curtain and you're going to do things that there that most men will believe impossible. If you will trust me and be obedient, I will protect you. And that's all that Jesus said. And it was not a calling from the Lord that uh, Tommy was, um, Terry was asked king for because he was absolutely petrified i don't know whether you realize but back then um the persecution of christians in the communist era was at its height 
But the Lord spoke those words and then was gone. And when he walked out on the platform half an hour later um, to speak, <laughs> he was still in rebellion to the whole idea because it was such a very, very dangerous thing to do. It would be like going to North Korea um, and today and speaking openly uh, of, the, of the gospel. It's estimated, I think, that something like 50,000 Christians are in labor camps in North Korea. And we hear that they get so hungry that they um, catch and eat rats in order to try and survive. Terry was absolutely petrified uh, about being caught and sent off to the dreadful Siberian labor camps where very few got out alive. Although um, when he got up on the platform, he tried to say a few words and read his text, but uh, um, he found himself unable to talk. Finally, after an embarrassing silence, he overcame his fears and doubts and broke down in tears in front of the audience and uh, made a declaration and said that he didn't understand it, but that one day he would preach in the communist countries behind the Iron Curtains because that was the Lord's wish, something that seemed impossible at the time. And God was faithful to that calling. Terry said that he wouldn't solicit invitations, but if God wanted him to go to these various countries, especially the first invitation would have to come from him. And the first invitation came two years later um, it was an invitation to sing in um, the southern part of Poland. Uh, a few mistakes had been made in the invitation, or should I say, God incidents. Those who were giving the invitation thought that Living Sound was an American rock and roll band. And Living Sound thought that they were university students that they were going to, to um, see. But it turned out that they were the youth leaders of the Southern Polish Communist Party. And they scheduled them for two fundraising events in the headquarters of the Communist Party. Well, they sang and God blessed and they led people to Christ until 3.30 in the morning. Hallelujah. The Lord did a mighty work. And Terry began to... Uh, or God began to show Terry something about the communist world, and, and they went into country after country. But finally, um, he really believed in his spirit that he was going to go to the USSR, to Russia. And in uh, 1978, the invitation came. Well, not really so much as an invitation. He'd been applying with the group for uh, a visa to get into Russia, but, of course, they'd always been refused. But suddenly, miraculously, in uh, 1978, in the summer, the visas were granted. A door of opportunity had opened, and they grabbed it with both hands, you might say. They didn't know where they were going. They just went into Moscow praying in the Holy Spirit. And when they arrived, it took them two days to find any believers you didn't advertise the fact that you were a Christian for fear of persecution. And of course, the Christians didn't know that they were coming. Then in a day and a half, they actually um, sang to 1,500 people. Isn't that amazing? In 36 hours, not only was it organized, but the place was overflowing with people. And the altar was crowded with young people. And Terry saw a young lady crying. And he pushed his way through the crowd and asked her why she was crying. And she replied in English. And this is absolutely amazing. She said that three years before, she'd heard an American rock, um, group singing on a radio station in Poland. And they sang about Jesus. That was the first time that we'd ever heard a song about Jesus on a communist radio station. And we found out that the, the name of that group was Living Sound. So three years ago, in our youth group, 
we started a time of fasting and prayer. There's not been one week in the last three years when there hasn't been someone from our youth group playing, Lord, send living sound to our church. Wow. Wow. She said, tonight I'm crying because living sound is playing in our church. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that wonderful? Would you have had the faith that those young Russian young people had? The Lord had given them a vision and they prayed and they fasted for it week after week for three years until their prayers were answered. That's faith. That's commitment. In those days before perestroika, Christian groups weren't let into Russia. In the natural, it was impossible for Living Sound to visit Russia, let alone their church. Did they let fear, unbelief, and doubt stop them? Not a bit of it. We serve a miracle-working God. Nothing put them off, and God honored their faith and prayer and made possible what seemed to be impossible. Things, of course, have changed since then. Um, some of you may know I had the privilege of, of preaching in Russia, uh, even in Siberia, but uh, back then it was a different story. They stepped out in faith. What about us? Do we need to repent of unbelief and get rid of our fears? Do we need to realize that God has so much more for us? Do we need to move from doing everything in our own strength to really believing and putting our trust in him? Don't we need a vision from the Lord that we can constantly pray for? So many people in our area are unaware of, of it, but they need Jesus. How often do we pray for a move of the Holy Spirit in this area? Could we pray like those Russian young people? I often hear from an American evangelist, Daniel Kalenda, and some time ago he sent me um, this message. He said, today I spoke to a man with an amazing story. He attended our first gospel campaign in Sierra Leone in 1991, accidentally. He came from a Muslim family, but he wasn't really religious. In fact, he was a drug addict and an alcoholic. And he had no exposure to Christianity, and he'd never heard the gospel. But he was a football fan. He used to come to the national stadium quite often to watch his favorite football team play. And one night, when he saw that a huge crowd had packed into the venue, he decided to see what was going on. So he stumbled into the meeting, drunk and high. But he said that the moment that he entered the stadium, he felt something he'd never felt before. The hair on his arm stood up, and he had goosebumps all over. Suddenly, he became sober. He heard evangelist Reinhard Bonnke preach the gospel, and he surrendered his life to Christ. That was over 30 years ago. Today, he's a pastor and a church planter that started 10 churches in Sierra Leone. I wonder how many thousands of stories like this we've never actually heard. But one thing is certain, mighty things are happening where Jesus is actually very much at work. He went on to explain how the miracles had happened at the meeting, how a woman testified that she came to the meeting crippled, her right foot had been severely broken twice and she could only hobble around with a crutch and even then um, in pain. But during the prayer for the sick, she felt that someone was unscrewing something in her foot. She thought one of the ushers was um, doing something to her foot. She looked down, but there was no one there. The unscrewing sensation continued until she realized the pain was gone and she could now walk. Daniel continued, at the final meeting of our gospel campaign in, in Freetown, Sierra Leone, the stadium was packed tonight, 
and the stadium workers were forced to open the gates so thousands could overflow onto the grass, which originally they told us they were, they were totally unwilling to do. He said, I spoke about the resurrection of Jesus and its unparalleled significance. As, and if Christ be not raised, Paul said, your faith is in vain and you are yet in your sins. Without the resurrection, the crucifixion would have just been an execution. But the good news is this. Now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. Miracles, salvations, healing and deliverance like the ones that took place tonight bear witness to this wonderful reality that he is risen indeed. Jesus wants to manifest his life the appoint, the anointed life, the Christ life. He wants to manifest his life in and through us, through the life of the church. We need a revelation. We need to know that we have access to heaven. We carry in us the love and power of Jesus Christ. The world needs the love and power of Jesus Christ to set them free. We need to know this and to believe what we are in Jesus, to know that we are children of our Heavenly Father. Do we understand what Jesus has sent us to do? Do we understand the power and authority that Jesus has given us to help those who are desperately looking for help? Do we understand the awesome love, grace and power of God in action? This is the work of Jesus. I've had personal experience myself, not just stories that I've told you this morning. When I was in India, um, I went to um, the area near Nepal and um, I, I arrived at a meeting where I was going to speak, expecting a crowd about the number that's here this morning. I didn't realize that it was a big sports hall. And when I actually got to the sports hall, I couldn't get in the main entrance because there were so many people there. And uh, I had to go in a side entrance near the stage. And uh, when I um, got into the uh, place, there were loads of people laid out in mats on, on, uh, in front of the stage. They'd actually gone to the hospital and they'd brought a whole load of people that were really very seriously ill. By the end of that evening, every single one of those people were up and dancing. God had healed every single one of them. One of them, I heard, had had brain cancer, and they he had a, a scan afterwards, and they couldn't understand how the cancer had totally disappeared. The second night, Indian television had got to hear about it, and they came and they fil filmed it. And... Uh, uh, even the person who was in charge of, of the um, film crew became a Christian. We were praying for people um, until after midnight each night because God was moving in such a mighty way. But it wasn't anything to do with me. It was all to do with Jesus. And uh, we need to understand that we need to get close to Jesus, to pray to the Lord to transform us, to give us a vision, to ask him to overcome fear and be obedient to his will. We mustn't be satisfied with just maintaining the status quo. We mustn't water down the gospel and forget the supernatural power of the risen glorified Saviour. How much convincing do we need? I leave you with this question. Are you... Um, really understanding um, what the disciples said. They said, we have seen the Lord. Or are you with Thomas who originally said, I will not believe? Are we walking in the love and power of our risen glorified Jesus? It's all about God restoring all his people to a place where we truly represent him in love, power and glory. We have got to listen to the news each day and realize that the world needs Jesus. 
we need to be the salt of the earth and with boldness share to a hurting, desperate world. Unless we, God's people, take the love of Jesus to those who are in despair, those who have messed up their lives, those who are suffering, they have no hope. They're lost in their unbelief. This morning, can we truly say, my Lord and my God, I will believe, I will surrender my life to the living Saviour who gave his life that I might live so that he may use us for his glory. It's time for us to move in boldness, love and power. This church is here to announce and demonstrate heaven on earth to bring about a time of refreshing. Let us believe and show that Jesus is alive and that he lives in us and through us he wishes to demonstrate his love to a broken world. Amen. i hand back to you, Peter. Thank you. Thank you, David. So we're just going to um, sing again before we close.